Hi, I'm Richa from Jaspik. In this video, I will give you a walkthrough of integration architecture that has to be followed for your website integration. This will help you get started with a website integration using Jaspik payment page. On the screen, you can see a flow chart that shows the communication that happens between merchant server, that is the backend, merchant client, that is the frontend, Jaspik payment page and Jaspik server. There are two backend API calls that has to be done in this integration, which we will understand in different stages that user follows while doing the payment. Stage one is when user is ready to do the payment. Merchant server has to do a session API call to Jaspi servers, which will create an order and return a payment link in the response. Session API requires order and customer related information like order ID, order amount, customer ID, customer phone, etc. Stage 2 is when user is shown the payment page and proceeds to pay. Merchant client has to pass the response and capture the payment link. This will show the payment page to the user. User can now attempt a transaction. After the transaction is completed, merchant servers has to do an order status API call to Jaspi servers. In return of this call, Jaspi will send the status of the order which the merchant can use to display to the user. The other way to know the status of the transaction is a push-based notification from Jaspi to Merchant. This is called webhook. We trigger webhooks whenever the status of the order reaches terminal status. To know in detail about the two API calls that we have to do, navigate to the documentation shared in the description. Navigate to the backend section of the base integration and click on Session API. On the left side, you can see the parameters that has to be passed in request. On the right side, you can also see a sample request and a sample response. To know more in detail about Order Status API, click on Order Status API. Towards the left section, you can see the request parameters that has to be passed and the different status that order status returns. To know more in detail about the different order statuses the API returns, you can navigate to the transaction status section under the resources. You can see a list of different statuses the API can return. To know more in detail about other features like subscription, you can navigate to additional S2S API section and click on the documentation. We will now understand the whole integration with the help of a sample website. On the screen, you can see a sample merchant website. Whenever user clicks on proceed to payment, you have to call a session API and receive the payment link in the response. When the payment page is opened, user can attempt a transaction. Once the transaction is completed, Merchant can call the order status API and based on the response, show the user the status of the transaction. Status can be pending, failed or successful. To know